Now, she was a budding opera singer who married one of the most significant composers of the 20th century. She was abandoned by him. She endured eight years in the Siberian Gulag. The life of Lena Prokofiev sheds light not only on Sergei Prokofiev himself, and it's not a particularly favorable picture, by the way, but it also provides a rare first-person account of life during one of the darkest periods of Soviet history. Well, with me is the author, Simon Morrison, who's just written a book about Lena Prokofiev. And, uh, Simon, what was so striking about Lena Prokofiev's life that made you want to write a book about her? Um, I was struck about the fact that this was somebody who really didn't have an identity, who um, decided that she wanted to be associated with somebody who was a major world celebrity. Um, she didn't really have distinguished herself on any level. Uh, her musical skills were limited compared to his. But she then... She was thrilled by him the moment she saw him, didn't Absolutely. She, she, she was, was what, mesmerized. 19, she was... Absolutely. She's yeah. mesmerized, starstruck. She desperately wanted the contact with him, and she lobbied hard um, to be with him, to be part of within his orbit. And um, her life was pretty undistinguished until she associated herself with him. He refused and to marry her, didn't he, initially? Yeah, he, he declined. Say, no, I'm not going to marry you, but then he did finally when she got pregnant. He, that's right, and he knew something about himself. He knew that, in fact, that um, all of his energy and all of his love was actually going into uh, his art and that uh, personal relationships and relationships, uh, you know, family relationships were not uh, what he was meant to do on this planet. I mean, he really believed that about himself. Uh, that's a picture there of her in her very, very glamorous uh, Parisian youth, and that's the after photograph when he had abandoned her and when she was arrested in Stalinist Moscow. So, yes, tell us a bit about that. I mean, you say she was abandoned by him, but actually she just, she carried on loving him, didn't she, for the whole of her life? She thought that he was the love of her life. She loved but him till the end. Mm. I think she tried very hard to prevent him from his own worst instincts, mm. uh, from the destructive impulses that ended up ruining not only her life, but his, their children's lives as well as her own. They had two sons. Now, you, you paint a picture of a fairly remarkable woman, don't you? I mean, just give it a thumbnail biography of her. You talked about her being um, arrested. Yeah, she was um, immensely talented in languages. She was uh, polyglot. She could speak five languages. She had very good uh, musical skills. She played the piano. She sang. She performed in Rigoletto. She became a heroine, um, a survivor, uh, unprecedented in many regards, after he left her. The fact that she lived and survived eight years in a Stalinist labor camp, <coughs> several of them, is astonishing to me. And that's, that's the main story of her, how she managed to get through that. And why was she actually arrested? She was arrested for four four counts. She was basically arrested for trying to leave the country. Uh, she was a Soviet citizen at this point. She was also charged with stealing documents, uh, with treason on various levels for smuggling letters abroad. Some of those things she actually did do. Uh, but the fundamental charge was trying to flee the country as a Soviet citizen. Uh, you depict her very much as a heroine and Sergei Prokofiev, the composer himself, a bit of a villain really. Wouldn't you say that's a fair description? I mean, is, is, that, is that justified, do you think? I mean, this is a you know, great composer whose music has enthralled people for many, many years, even to this day. I suppose if people... I mean, the general take is that he was, he's a villainous with regard to her, but he knew, and I think uh, he told her many years even before they were married, that fundamentally all of his emotional life, all of his energy, all of his love went into his art. And so commitments to things beyond his art, that was uh, troubling for him. It was not something that he felt capable of doing. And he, I think, tried very hard to let her know that. But ultimately, because she became pregnant, uh, because they had a family life, he, you know, he, he was forced to try to play the role of a good father. He was never very interested, though, was he, in, in the two sons and, and family life? No, he was a cold individual, very cold mm -hmm. to the external world, warm m musically. And, and what has um, looking into her story told you about his musical genius? Has it shed any light on Sergei Prokofiev that perhaps we weren't aware of? One of the things um, I found remarkable is that he actually gradually lost his ability to compose. There was something about his gift that left him after he left her. And I think that that was a remarkable story. And the other thing we find out is that he placed enormous mental strain on himself to compose. His gift was on a level of Mozart or Tchaikovsky, but he believed fundamentally that given the gift he was, that he needed to serve it with all of his energy. And that comes across in really stark detail in regard to his relationship or actually non-relationship with her over time. Mm. As you spoke there, we just saw a picture of him there. Um, but she, uh, she had a good relationship with her two sons. Absolutely, a wonderful mm. relationship, especially with the younger of the two sons, I like, mm. who, is, uh, who has ended up living here in London. And, and so tell us uh, more, what happened then afterwards? I mean, uh, I said a thumbnail biography of her and what made you want to write this book about her. So give us, you know, how her life ended and so on, what happened after the gulag. That's the last photograph of her. That's with her two sons just before her death, a few days. That's her last birthday, 92nd birthday. Um, she 
the, main, the reason why I wanted to write this story was I wanted to know what happened to her. Um, we didn't know what happened to her, why she was arrested. We didn't know how she managed to survive those eight years. And the documents that I was provided from the archives in question and from Prokofiev's grandson and son um, told us in a, you know, stark detail again, you know, what life was like in a Stalinist prison camp in the system for eight years. Um, she survived World War II in Moscow on her own with the two sons. Uh, she got through the arrest. She got through interrogations and torture for nine months in Moscow, and then she was shipped off to nobody knew where uh, for eight years. And then she survived all of that and then lived a long and productive life and then endeavored uh, through sheer force of will to preserve his legacy and preserve a lot of works which might otherwise have been lost. And she died? She died in 1989, age 92. It's a good long life, the fascinating life of Lena Prokofiev, married to the great composer Sergei Prokofiev. Simon Morrison, thank you very much for coming in to talk to us about your book. Thank you.